Welcome to Tales of Honor Podcast, a podcast dedicated to telling the true stories of the Congressional Medal of Honor. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Tales of Honor Podcast. I'm your host, Christoph Ambrosch, as usual. Today's episode is episode 35. It's going to bring us back to Afghanistan in probably what is one of the more notable or recognizable stories of the Afghanistan war. And it's of Michael P. Murphy. But before we go there, it's being brought to you by Design Cake Studios. It's my good friends down in Florida, Florida, I believe how they say it. And they are a small creative design company with big town graphic and web design. Look, it's no secret. They've done my business cards. They've done my logo. And uh, I keep coming back. Keep coming back for more. And uh, really, to say that I couldn't be any happier is really an understatement. Uh, they do fantastic work with great attention to detail. And if you need a look, maybe you don't have one and you need one, or you have a business that already has a look and you want to have it revamped, then give them uh, reach out to them. And talk to them at designcakestudios.com. Ask them about their their beautiful, thick business cards. That's what I have. I always get compliments on them. And uh, when you do contact them, let them know that you heard about them here on the podcast. Because if you do that, you'll receive a free consultation. Design Cake Studios. Fresh thinking made bold. And now, a tale of honor. Michael P. Murphy was born on the 7th of May, 1976, in Smithtown, New York, and was raised in Patchogue. He played youth soccer and peewee football, and his father, a Vietnam veteran, was also his coach. In high school, Michael continued on playing sports and also took a summer job as a lifeguard and even continued this job through college. Michael was known as Murph and the Protector, because of two separate occasions where he had protected someone from harm. The first was in eighth grade, when he saw a child with special needs being shoved into a locker. It was the only time the principal of the school had to call Michael's parents. The other time was when he witnessed a homeless man being attacked while collecting cans. Michael chased away the attackers and even helped the man pick up his cans. In 1994, Michael graduated from Patchogue Medford High School and went on to attend Pennsylvania State University, where he would graduate with a double major in political science and psychology in 1998. After college, Michael had gotten accepted into several law schools, but instead decided to attend SEAL mentoring at the United States Merchant Marine Academy. He did accept an appointment to the U.S. Navy's Officer Candidate School in Pensacola, Florida in September of 2000, and on December 13th, Michael became commissioned as an ensign. He then began basic underwater demolition SEAL, or BUDS, training in Coronado, California in January of 2001. He graduated with Class 236. After BUDS, Michael attended the U.S. Army Airborne School, SEAL Qualification Training, and SEAL Delivery Vehicle School. After earning his SEAL Trident, Michael checked on board SDV Team 1 in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, and in October 2002, deployed with Foxtrot Platoon to Jordan as part of Exercise Early Victor. After this tour, Michael was assigned to Special Operations Command Central in Florida and deployed to Qatar in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom. Once back from Qatar and Djibouti, Michael was deployed once more, but this time to Afghanistan in support of Operation Enduring Freedom and Operation Red Wings. This mission was a counterinsurgent mission in Kunar province and involved four members of the U.S. Navy SEALs, Michael Murphy, Danny Dietz, Matthew Axelson, and Marcus Luttrell. If any of these names seem familiar to you, it may be because you watched the 2013 film Lone Survivor, where Michael is portrayed by actor Taylor Kish. This mission was to locate and kill, or capture, a top Taliban leader, Ahmed Shah, 
who commanded a group of insurgents known as Mountain Tigers. Michael and the team were dropped off by helicopter east of Asadabad near the Pakistan border, and after being discovered by a group of goat herders, the team let the herders go, and shortly after, nearby Taliban forces were alerted of the team's presence. Through the fighting that would follow, Michael would display actions worthy of the Medal of Honor. The citation reads, For conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty, as the leader of a special reconnaissance element with Special Naval Warfare Task Unit Afghanistan on 27 and 28 June 2005, while leading a mission to locate a high-level anti-coalition militia leader, Lieutenant Murphy demonstrated extraordinary heroism in the face of grave danger in the vicinity of Asadabad, Kunar Province, Afghanistan. On 28 June 2005, operating in an extremely rugged, enemy-controlled area, Lieutenant Murphy's team was discovered by anti-coalition militia sympathizers who revealed their position to Taliban fighters. As a result, between 30 and 40 enemy fighters besieged his four-member team. Demonstrating exceptional resolve, Lieutenant Murphy valiantly led his men in engaging the large enemy force. The ensuing fierce firefight resulted in numerous enemy casualties as well as the wounding of all four members of the team. Ignoring his own wounds and demonstrating exceptional composure, Lieutenant Murphy continued to lead and encourage his men. While the primary communicator fell mortally wounded, Lieutenant Murphy repeatedly attempted to call for assistance for his beleaguered teammates. Realizing the impossibility of communicating in the extreme terrain and in the face of almost certain death, he fought his way into open terrain to gain a better position to transmit a call. This deliberate, heroic act deprived him of cover, exposing him to direct enemy fire. Finally achieving contact with his headquarters, Lieutenant Murphy maintained his exposed position while he provided his location and requested immediate support for his team. In his final act of bravery, he continued to engage the enemy until he was mortally wounded, gallantly giving his life for his country and for the cause of freedom. By his selfless leadership, Lieutenant Murphy reflected great credit upon himself and upheld the highest traditions of the United States Naval Service. Not mentioned in the citation was the loss of 16 American Special Operations Forces members when their helicopter was shot down while coming to extract Michael and his team. Until 2011, this was the largest loss of life for American forces since the beginning of the invasion and the largest loss for the SEALs since the Vietnam War. The only team member to survive this mission was Marcus Luttrell, who was protected by local villagers and sent a runner to the closest military base in order for a rescue team to find him. Six days after the attack, Michael's remains were found during a large combat search and rescue operation. He was returned to the States and on the 13th of July 2005 was buried with full military honors at Calverton National Cemetery in Long Island, New York. For his actions on that day in Afghanistan, Michael had posthumously been awarded the Silver Star. On the 11th of October 2007, the White House announced that Michael's Silver Star would be upgraded to the Medal of Honor. On the 22nd of October 2007, President Bush presented the Medal of Honor to Michael's parents in a ceremony at the White House. In addition to having his military awards and inscription added to the Hall of Heroes in the Pentagon, the high school where he attended a post office in his hometown, a park in his hometown, a guided missile destroyer, and much more would all bear his name in honor of Michael P. Murphy. And that was a tale of honor. Thank you all so much for listening to Tales of Honor podcast. I know you like this podcast because you keep coming back. Please be sure that you subscribe wherever it is you listen to podcasts, whether it's on the Apple podcast app, in iTunes, uh, whether it's on Libsyn, or any of the Android applications that allow you to listen to podcasts, 
or YouTube or Facebook, wherever. Be sure you subscribe so you always know when a new one's coming out, even though I know you already know it's every Wednesday and Sunday. (laughs) Be sure to leave a nice review and a rating as well. Tell a friend. Tell your family. If you know someone who's in the military, maybe they haven't heard of this podcast. You never know. Let them know about it. You can see more information on Facebook, Instagram, and at talesofhonorpodcast.com. If you have any questions or comments, you can send them to talesofhonorpodcast at gmail.com. And until next time, I'm Christoph Ambrose. Thanks for listening.